Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, all you wonderful, beautiful painters. So I am happy to be back and getting back to what I really love to do, which is woodworking, and then we're going to paint the woodworking. So um, God has had it on my heart a lot for me to get back on my scroll saw and really get back to where I originally came from when I started all of this. So that is what I did yesterday. Um, so I've got a couple of crosses that I cut out. I also have a shield as well as a little puzzle piece here. So today we are going to cut um, this cross. So I'm going to move this stuff, the cross, out of the way. Um, in a few uh, future videos, we are going to be cut. We are going to be painting um, this cross here that will come together. Uh, to form one cross. Uh, we will be working on this little puzzle piece. So, um, and actually it's going to stand up this way. And it all comes apart. So, um, yeah. So that we are going to paint that and then we are going to build it all and build and put all of that together in a video. And then we also have my shield here that we will paint and then probably we're going to put a vinyl over this one um, once it's done. So that is the upcoming videos. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get them done in succession and get them out to you pretty quickly. All of the MDF was cut out of half inch um, MDF and then everything was hand routed and then I sanded it all starting at um, 120 grit then 220, then 320, then 400 to give us a really good smooth top. So this is what this cross is going to look like when we put it all back together. And I've got my little labels on the back of them so I know how they go back together. So once it is all painted and we, we put it back together, this is what the finished cross is going to look like. Um, so the colors that we are using, I decided I kind of wanted to do a, um, a, a type of bloom on each one of these. So we're going to have different colors on each one and it's all going to be a bloom. Our uh, mica powders we're working with, with are this little piggy shimmer. We've got unicorn art uh, peacock green. Unicorn art maraca blue. And then this little piggy sapphire. Our cell activator is a mixture of the Amsterdam uh, titanium white and the master's touch permanent black to give us a, a gray cell activator and then our base for some reason I decided we were going to do um, a light purple so we'll see how that uh, works with using a light purple base now remember before you paint MDF especially half inch MDF because it does have a tendency to warp um, wood again is very porous and it will soak up water so I'm going to go ahead and prep all of these and put a good coat of um, just acrylic paint on it make sure I seal everything up so the moisture from the paint doesn't get absorbed into the MDF so it doesn't warp it or make the fibers lift because if you put too much paint the fibers will also lift and you will have a rough top so I'm going to go ahead and do that and we will be right back We are going to go ahead and get started. We're just going to start with these two pieces because that's what I have um, in front of me right now.
Okay, we are done. Um, it takes a bit to do these just because you're doing them a piece at a time. So I am going to leave these to sit uh, probably for the next couple of days. Good thing about MDF is it dries super, super fast. Um, and a lot of the times when you have MDF because the base is so porous, you don't get a whole lot of cracking even if you have a whole lot of thick paint. So we will see how all of this dries. Um, I'm super excited to see it all put together. One great surprise about the, uh, the white that I use, it's actually a gold interference. So now we have a real pretty uh, gold shimmer where we use uh, the white. So I'm super excited about this. Um, we are going to let this dry and whenever we come back, we will uh, be putting it all together, gluing it together, and then putting our first coat of resin on. So see y'all soon. Hey everybody, welcome back. So everything is dried and uh, we are going to move on to the next step. So when you're doing these Especially with MDF, one of the things you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that the back is flat. So we did have some dripping. We tried to catch as much as we could, but we did have some dripping. So what I did is I've got all of these pieces here is I just went around the back side of uh, the piece and I cut off any of the clumps. So I haven't done it on this one. And so you can see the difference from whenever I shave off all of these paint bumps and make it nice and flat. So whenever we uh, put it all together and build it and resin it, it's all gonna fit together nicely. So what we're gonna do is you're just gonna take a blade and it's really simple and you're just gonna cut around the backside and cut off all those clumps of paint. And we're gonna trim all of that off to give us a nice flat. Okay, now that we've got that all trimmed up, we can go ahead and put on our first coat of resin. So the first coat of resin is really just a sealing coat. It is not going to be the one that we're gonna use to kind of pull all of this together. So what we're gonna do is, um, <clears throat> we are going to kind of paint on the resin. Again, it's going to be a super, super thin coat. Um, we are going to put it back up on the risers. And so that way, if again, if there are any drips, then we'll cut them down. Now, one thing to remember whenever you're doing the inside is you still want to seal the inside. But um, it needs to be really thin so it fits nice and flush together. Also, look at the bottom here, and if you see clumps, you're going to go ahead and want to cut those off as well. Again, don't go too deep, but you really just kind of want to clean up that edge. Because one, you're not going to see this part because it's the inside. But that's going to make it, when you smooth that out, where it has a much tighter fit when you put it back in. Okay, now I have all of the pieces together. So we are going to be using the Envirotex Light Resin. It is a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, and it is by volume, not by weight. So make sure whenever you're measuring everything out, you're measuring by volume, not by weight. So one of the things that I do is I use uh, these cups. They're five ounce cups that have ridges on them. It makes it very, very easy to make sure that you are getting the same volume in each cup just by using your ridges. So I'm gonna get all this together and you don't need a whole bunch of resin for this because we're just gonna paint the resin on. We're not looking for a really thick coat. So I am putting the resin up to the second line in the cups. Oh to fix that. Okay, and we are gonna use the two cup method. So I have my silicone stirring stick here. 
So we're just going to dump some of the resin into one container. We're going to mix that up a little bit. Making sure to scrape the bottom and pull everything from the bottom to the top. And then we're going to pour everything, all of that, back into the first cup. This is called the two cup method. And this is a great way to make sure that you're getting everything mixed evenly. Because sometimes if you just use one cup, everything that's in the bottom doesn't get mixed up. And this way it ensures everything from the bottom is now on the top. And so now we are going to continue stirring until it is nice and clear. And then we are going to take a little bit of this little piggy. It is that one that has the shimmer. And it's the one that we used on the very top and the very bottom. And I don't know if you can see it, but it has a beautiful um, gold uh, shimmer to it. And so we are going to add a very small amount into this as we paint it on. And it's going to give the entire cross a little bit of a gold reflective shimmer. And so we are going to go ahead and uh, get these painted up. Now that we've got all of that in there, we do have a lot of extra resin. I told y'all we didn't need a whole, whole lot, but. So one thing you can always do is always keep some molds on hand. So these are the molds for the kunai keychains that I sell at Comic-Con. And so any of the uh, extra resin that I have, I just pour into these molds and that way nothing goes to waste and I can use them for later. So we are going to go ahead and fill up some of these molds. This one is a little... All right, that is it. We are going to let all of this sit for a while. Hit it one more time. It's nice and thin, so there shouldn't be any bubbles to pop. Okay, we are all done. Um, I'm going to let this sit for probably about six to eight hours. And then while hopefully the sides are still just very, very slightly tacky... We're going to put down a piece of Teflon and then we are going to build this so it can seal itself the rest of the way. And then we will do the um, top coat of resin. <clears throat> we will be back. All right. So it is quite a few hours later. Um, this stuff has really gotten to a good tacky 
level. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to pick this up and move this fully out of the way and bring in another flat board. Um, put the Teflon on top of it and then we are going to piece this together so whenever it finishes curing, it can finish curing and bind itself. So I am going to go ahead and get this moved and bring in the other board and then we will put this all together. Okay, so I have a, another board here and we are going to go ahead and we're going to lay this piece of Teflon down. Now Teflon is great. I use them mainly for sublimation, but they're also really good for um, resin and even paint pouring. You could pour on top of them and then peel them off if you want to do skins. So Teflon sheeting is great for a multitude of uses. So I'm going to go ahead and grab pieces of the cross and bring them in and then we are going to get this built. Okay, it is all built together. I put some pressure on it to kind of push everything together so the resin will bind to itself. And we are gonna leave it sitting here for probably the next couple of days. Um, I'll probably move it all the way to do another painting, but it will sit on this Teflon sheet for a couple of days while the resin fully cures. Envirotex resin is um, touchable. So it's, it's tacky in about eight hours, touchable in about 16, fully cured in a little over 48. So we're going to leave this here, and then once it is nice and cured, then we will go in and we will do our final top coat. All right, everybody, we are back. It is all dried. It is nice and solid and put together. I already have the resin poured. It's the same resin as, as earlier. It is a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, not by weight. Um, I went ahead and I have sanded down the sides and the top with a light sanding, and then I wipe the entire thing down with alcohol. I've also, these are all nice and sticky. Um, I have also gone ahead and I painted the back. Probably after this is all dried, a couple of weeks afterwards, I will go back and actually do a full sanding on the back, smooth all of that out, and then paint it again. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and put our cross back. So what we're going to do, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. If you want a nice, really thick layer where you don't have the um the resin actually flow into the crevices and give you that depth one thing that you could do is this is resin tape i just get it on amazon and you could tape the outside boundary and then the pour the resin on let it cure sand down those sides and then do a top coat and we'll do that on a later cross but i really want the indentions in the resin of where everything joins together so we're we're just going to do a straight pour over it and then we're going to kind of use our finger to kind of pull some of that resin out of the center. So that way we kind of have that, that little bit of definition. Um, grab my star stick here. So we are going to mix up our resin doing the two cup method. Hey everybody. So I completely forgot to talk here. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to put a very, very light uh, coat over the entire thing. So as you can see, I'm just kind of uh, sprinkling out some resin all over the cross. And, and then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread it around, making sure to push some of that resin into that crevice so we can go ahead and start filling that in. And um, I'm just going to go over really lightly, just kind of sealing up the cross and um, making sure that we have resin in all of the crevices before we move on to the next step. Again, always make sure that you catch your side. So I'm gonna put, go around the outside with the resin and just do the outside line of it. Okay, and now we are gonna kind of push that resin over the edge and make sure we have a nice smooth coating on the edge.
Now I'm just going to put the rest of the resin in the middle, making sure I get plenty in those cracks. We want to make sure those are going to be nice and sealed before we pull the resin out of them. And so I just, all I went in is I just went in and used my finger on the crevices. And I'm just going to do that a couple more times. And that's going to give us enough of a dip. And the resin itself will kind of form like a little lip on its own. But won't completely fall in. So we'll still have that separation and that definition. Now one of the reasons I have a glove on this hand and not on this hand is because one, I'm not using this hand to really touch the resin. Um, and also I can grab my torch and torch the cross between cleaning out and not have to worry about getting resin all over my torch. All right, we're gonna torch it one last time and then we are going to let it sit and see what we get. We will be back once it's cured. All right, everybody, we are done. Um, the resin actually dried beautifully. We've got some nice um, indentions here where everything comes together. So it kind of gives it that definition and it's not just flat. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I get rid of these resin bumps real quick. It's super easy to do. Um, and then, you know, off camera, I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sand all of this down and then repaint it and then brush a coat of resin on the back just to give it a little bit more structure. It's pretty solid. It's not gonna go anywhere now with all the resin on it, but, um, to go ahead and finish up the back, I'm just gonna sand it down with, I'll probably start with about 80 grit sandpaper, get it nice and level, and then probably about 120 and then I'll paint it black again and then do a brush coat of resin on it. But, so if you have drips on the back of whatever it is you're working on, um, one of the ways that you can get them off is just with a blowtorch and a blade. So we're just gonna heat this up real quick and then you can just pop it off. And you can do this on the back of a canvas as well. Um, just be very careful you don't cut your canvas. You can also just sand them down if you want to do that. So I'm just going to hit it just a little bit and, and then pop them off. And that way I don't have to do as much sanding to sand all of these down. And then whenever I finish the back, it's going to finish the whole thing. So I'll go around the entire cross and I'm just going to hit them with the blowtorch. Nice and simple. And then pop off the resin pieces and that's it and that's how I get rid of drips on the back of my pieces so we are going to go ahead and wrap this up uh, we are all done thank you very much for joining me if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section um, and I will do my best to get back to you um, actually directly after this video I am going to start working on our next piece if I can find where I put all of them The next one we're going to be working on is going to be this one that we are going to do um, separates and then we're going to put them together kind of like we did this. Paint them in separate pieces and then put them and seal them together in resin. So that will be the next video coming up. But again, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful and blessed uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas season. Um, I got some new stuff coming. We've got that cross coming as well as um, some more information on the Kitty Toe project that just launched and everything. So I'll have that in the next couple of videos. So I hope everyone has a wonderful and blessed day. And as always, God bless.